In this video, you'll learn to add electron pushing arrows to a reaction mechanism. Here is an example of a typical reaction. All the reactants and products have been provided. To start, expand the structure. You can draw the full Lewis structure as I've done here, or focus on the parts of the molecule that react. It's up to you. Next, map the reaction. To do this, we identify the atoms and electrons in the starting materials and find those same atoms and electrons in the products. Mapping can be done using colors, numbers, or any other method you choose. Which methyl group is carbon-1 in the products? The methyl group next to the methine, the CH, is carbon-1 in the products. It's next to the same group as it was in the starting materials. We can number the rest of the carbon, oxygen, and chlorine atoms, making sure to give the atoms the same numbers in the products as in the starting materials. It's also important to map the electrons, because they're the ones involved in bond formation and breakage. Notice that the carbon-chlorine bond has broken, and a carbon-oxygen bond has formed. Formal charge offers a big hint here to indicate where the electrons have gone. The chlorine was neutral in the starting materials and became negative, therefore it accepted electrons. It has a fourth non-bonding electron pair in the products. Oxygen was negative and became neutral, therefore it shared electrons. It started with three non-bonding electron pairs and finished with only two. It can be helpful to build a model to make sure we have the right components. At this point, we are not focusing on stereochemistry or the configuration of the reacting centers. This is something you will learn as you study specific reactions. Every new or broken bond must be described with an electron pushing arrow, also called a curved arrow. These arrows always start with electrons and point to an atom or bond. Start the electron pushing arrow on one of the non-bonding electron pairs on oxygen. It doesn't matter which pair. Point the arrow to the carbon. Start a new arrow between the carbon and chlorine atoms and point the arrow to the chlorine. This shows that the electrons from the carbon-chlorine bond go to the chlorine atom. Finally, check your work. You should have one arrow for each pair of electrons involved in that step of the mechanism. Now let's address some tricky situations. Negatively or positively charged compounds don't come out of a bottle like that. They have a counter ion, such that the substance is neutral overall. To draw the electron pushing arrows when a metal-nonmetal bond is involved, it helps to first dissociate those parts into their constituent ions. We expand the structure to reveal the electrons, then separate the metal and nonmetal. In this case, the sodium and oxygen atoms. When dissociated, the more electronegative oxygen bears the electrons from the NaOH bond. Assign the formal charges, then repeat this procedure for the sodium bromide. If you dissociate the Na and Br, what is the charge on each atom? The sodium again has a positive charge. The bromine has a negative charge. Now we can repeat the strategy described earlier to draw the electron pushing arrows. Try doing this yourself before continuing. The hydroxide oxygen shares its electron pair to create a new oxygen-carbon bond. At the same time, the carbon-bromine bond breaks, forming bromide. Add in the electron pushing arrows, check your work, and move on. What if the reaction has multiple steps? At this stage, every intermediate will be shown to you. As you advance in organic chemistry courses, you will learn to predict the mechanism of reactions. The key is to take it one step at a time. What happens in the first step of this reaction? In the first step, the carbon-bromine bond breaks. That's all. Where should the first arrow start? The arrow must start from the bond between the carbon and bromine atoms. It must point to the bromine atom to show where the electrons go. What happens in the second step of this reaction?
In the second step, the carbon-oxygen bond forms, which generates the second intermediate. What about the third step? In the third step, a molecule of methanol from the solvent, its enlarged excess, forms a new bond between oxygen and hydrogen. The original HO bond breaks, and the oxygen receives the electrons, making it neutral. In summary, every time you need to add electron pushing arrows to depict a reaction mechanism, start by expanding the structures, map the atoms and electrons, use a model if necessary, and then draw the arrows to show all the bonds that break and form in that step of the reaction. Remember to review your work, check that you have the correct answer, and reflect on what you learned by answering this question.